So today we're looking at refraction calculations uh, and the equation we're going to be using sometimes referred to as Snell's Law, uh, all links in. Uh, so just to remind ourselves, we said that refraction was the bending of light, not to be confused uh, with reflection or diffraction. Okay, so that's not a pen, so that's a wonderful start. So refraction, we said was the bending of light. And we'll look at an example in a sec. Um, we're going to talk about the refractive index. So N is the refractive index. And N is a measure of how much the light refracts. The higher the refractive index, the more refraction, therefore the more the light bends. Uh, refractive index, some useful ones uh, for air, uh, for water, for glass, for diamond. You're never going to be asked to recite these, but they're useful to know. And they're useful to know because if you get an n of less than 1, you've done something wrong. Okay, so if you've got n equals, uh, you've done something wrong. Okay, and we'll look at where they might come in. Also, if you've got an n greater than 4, you've probably done something wrong also. And again, we'll, we'll talk about that. So refraction is the bending of light. And the reason people find it tricky is the equation isn't a standard sort of equation, but we just sort of remind ourselves about which way light bends to start with. So here we've got uh, light coming into our block. Uh, so we've gone from air, this is a glass block. So the glass block, the refractive index is 1.5. And in the air, I'm not going to write in the white, so you can see that. N is 1, then N is also 1 up here. So the first thing we've got to remind ourselves to draw, those handy annotations are going to disappear, but never mind, uh, is a normal line at 90 degrees to the surface. Um, and here's the thing, when light goes from a low refractive index to a higher refractive index, it bends towards the normal. Okay. What we mean by that is, here, the angle is the angle of incidence, and let's say it's about 30 degrees. Inside, it's bent towards the normal, so there's R, it's our angle of refraction. So our refractive index is about 20 degrees. So when we're talking about bending towards the normal, you can see this line has come closer to this normal line. Okay. Now when it bends away from the normal is when it goes from a um, low refractive, sorry, a high refractive index, so the glass, to a low refractive index. Okay. So here, glass still 1.5, air still 1. So it's a high refractive index to a low, so it bends away. And again, you can see there bending away from the normal so your refractive angle of refraction is smaller than your angle of incidence notice similar to the work that we did drawing with reflection the angle is always between the ray and the normal okay so it's not here it's not over here okay it's well it's there okay see isn't it so the angle of refraction refraction so properly, here is lower than the angle of incidence. Okay. So you need to be able to talk about it qualitatively, its own words. So the idea of which way is it going to bend, you need to be able to predict which way it's going to bend. You're not going to need to necessarily accurately draw it, although you should be able to. Um, you're just going to need to say, is it going to bend away from the normal, is it going to bend towards the normal? Why? It's going from more dense to less dense, or a high refractive index to a low refractive index. Um, so just think about those things. The only other aspect of it is, is this idea of Snell's Law. Um, we use a slightly simplified version in the GCC, um, but that's fine, it still works. Um, we said N is the refractive index, and we said N equals sine I over sine R, where I is the angle of incidence. And R is the angle of refraction. Um, things to bear in mind is on your calculator, 
um, on your screen somewhere. Make it look more calculatory. Um, there is hopefully about here a letter D, and that tells you you're working in degrees. If it's going, if it's an R or a G, then you're going to need to change that and uh, obviously have a look that up or speak to someone and tell you how to change that. It's beyond the scope of this video, but you want it on D because D stands for degrees, and we're going to be working in degrees. Uh, R for radians, G for radians, um, which we're not going to need uh, until A level. Um, the other thing about the equation, uh, some people are tempted to go, oh, sine and sine, I'll cancel those. Um, you can't do that, because um, that's not how the sines work. Um, so we've got to deal with sine i and sine r. So we're going to look at three examples, uh, and we're going to look at rearranging this equation uh, in three different ways. And hopefully that'll make a bit more sense. So in our first example, we're going to assume we've got some light coming in at 30 degrees. And we're going to assume that we've got a chunk of glass. So I've got a refractive index of 1.5. No, we don't. Spoiler alert. That could well be the answer that we're working towards. Do, do, do. So we've still got our 30. Okay, still got our 30 degrees. And our angle of refraction is equal to 19.5 degrees. Okay. So we've got I, we've got R, and we're trying to find N. So we're going to use N equals sine I over sine R. Okay. So that means N equals sine of 30 degrees over sine of 19.5 degrees. Um, now you can do this in one calculation, depending on your calculator, but if you're happier, do it in bits. So you end up with 0.5 divided by 0.33, which gives us n equals 1.5. Who knew? Um, and remember we said earlier on, if it's 1.5, then it's possibly glass. Okay, because that's good refractive index of 1.5. So that's the easiest one where you don't need to rearrange the equation. Hopefully you're fairly happy with that. Uh, now in a completely different setup, um, we've now got some diamond. So n equals 2.4. Notice there's no unit on the refractive index because you've got uh, a sine of an angle divided by a sine of another angle, so no units there. Uh, so n equals 2.4. And the angle of refraction refracting, is 20 degrees. So that's that angle in there. And we're trying to find the angle of incidence. Okay, so we're going to start from the same place and equal sine i over sine r. Now, we've got to try and get i on its own because that's what we're trying to find. Okay, but the trick is. It's not just i on its own, but it's easier to sort of isolate the sine i bit first and then deal with the sine bit afterwards. So, what we can do is if we times both sides by sine r, then that's going to come up to the top, isn't it? So we're going to get n sine r equals sine i. So from here, we've then got to isolate and get i on its own. Okay, and the way to get rid of a sine is to use the inverse sine function, or anti-sine, or sine minus one, or shift sine. So if you're using a calculator, you would work this bit out, and then you'd anti-sine it, you'd shift sine it. So if we anti-sine, or d-sine, or inverse sine, or arc sine, many options, both sides, then we end up with i equals sine minus one of n sine. Okay, so all we did is we got sine i on its own first, and then we got rid of the sine by shift signing or anti signing both sides. So we end up with sine minus 1 of uh, 2.4 times sin of 20. Oh, 20. Um, so again, just be careful, make sure you can do this on your calculator and you come, come out with the, the answer that you uh, 
the same answer as me. Of 55 degrees. Okay. If you're getting math errors, then have a look. Make sure you uh, maybe try breaking it down into smaller stages. Make sure you're covering all the all the options. Obviously, if this thing in this box uh, is greater than one, you can't inverse sign it, so you've gone wrong somewhere. That tends to crop up more in the total internal reflection stuff, but that's something for another day. So that's getting I on its own, which is the sort of easier of the two. The last one we're going to look at is how we get R on its own. So now we're going to look at a block of water. That's a refractive index of 1.33. Uh, I is 45 degrees. No, none of these diagrams are to scale because they're the same, but the angle keeps changing. And we're trying to find R. Okay. So again, we start with n equals sine I over sine R. Again, we're going to try and isolate this sine I function. Okay. And we're going to do that by bringing the sine I up to the top. And the n down to the bottom. So what that ends up being is sine r equals sine i over n. Okay, and then just like before, we've got an inverse sine both sides. So we get r equals the inverse sine of sine i over n. And we put the numbers in. We find that r equals sine 45 1.33 equals 32 degrees. And all of these, uh, I would expect you to be sort of mentally checking these answers seem right. So, for example, here, the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of reflection of incidence because it's inside the glass block. It's what you'd expect. On the previous page, uh, the angle of incidence was 55 degrees compared to 20 degrees. Okay, Just have a look. Make sure your answer seems right. Okay, If you get a math error, then check your calculation. Make sure you haven't missed anything out. Or try separating, out, separating things out into bits. Um, if you want to practice any of these, you can find um, uh, refraction calculation calculators online. Um, the only difference is, as you'll see, n1 and n2. Okay, just set n1 as one, which is air, and n2 is whatever the n you're going to work with. So all you would do is, so you might have a line like that. And as you normal. Know, so you'd have n1, which is the air, and then n2, which is the n of whatever you're trying to find. There's I, but sometimes called theta 1, and there's R, sometimes called theta 2. Um, and what you can do is you can pick, uh, you could say, right, what if N was 2 and I was 27 degrees, R would equal, I don't know. Um, so what you can do is you can then test out using the equation we just used, and then you can check it on a calculator and hopefully get the same answer. I know some people like to use triangles. Um, I'm not a massive fan, um, but as I said, I know some people like them. So the triangle you can sort of use, but you've just got to be a bit careful. Okay. So we know that n equals sine i over sine r. Okay. So. Uh, the way that this works is you cover up the thing you want to find. So if I wanted to find n, I'd cover up the n and then say n equals sine i over sine r, which we know. This is one of the equations, remember, you need to be able to um, recall. Okay? Too far. So n equals sine i over sine r. Next, if I wanted to find what sine i was, I'd cover up the sine i. Okay? And I'd say that sine i equals n sine r. Now, we're not done because once you've worked that out, 
draw a line, make something like divide. Once you've worked out n side r, you then inverse sign both sides. Okay, and then similarly for yeah. similarly for yeah. finding sine r, you cover up the sine r bit, and you say that sine r equals sine i over n, so r equals sin minus one. I over n. So you can use the triangle, so you've just got to be careful. It's not giving you the complete answer. You, you've still got to inverse sign it if you're trying to find i or r. Um, so hopefully that's helped a bit with refraction.